Hey guys, this is Wasim from Curious Doc. This is part three of the climbing series where we go into the physiology and biomechanics of common climbing techniques. If you haven't watched part one or part two, click on the links in the cards or in the description. And make sure you're subscribed with notifications to be notified when I release future climbing videos. Today we'll be talking about dead pointing. Imagine throwing a tennis ball up in the air. At the peak of its ascent, there's a fraction of a second where the ball is almost completely still, where the upwards of momentum is balanced by the downward pull of gravity. This principle is used in dead pointing. Use the springy motion of the arms and legs to propel yourself to the next hold. It's a type of dynamic movement, meaning it requires the body to swing, as opposed to a static movement where you simply climb from one hold to the next with minimal movement. In dead pointing, there's always a body part touching the wall. If your legs and arms leave the wall completely, then it's called a dyno, but the principles are similar. There are a few key things to keep in mind when doing a dead point. Firstly, the power of the movement comes from a compression phase. This is followed by an explosive extension phase where the forward momentum of the body propels you in the direction you wanna go. The second thing is that the aim of the dead point or dyno is to throw your center of mass towards the wall instead of parallel. In other words, you wanna throw your shoulders and hips directly towards the next hold instead of moving parallel with the wall. This way, when you grab onto the next hold, your center of mass is in a biomechanically favorable position close to the wall. Because as we know, the closer our body is to the wall, the more stable we are and the less energy we expend. The third point is to keep in mind that you should only jump as much as required, not too much or not too little. You want the next hold to be at the peak of your motion, where all the forces are balanced, like that tennis ball analogy. This minimizes the contact strength required when holding onto the next hold. If you're under or overshoot, you have to grip tighter onto the next hold to stabilize yourself. When done properly, it looks pretty graceful. The lead and all he can do then is watch Adam Andre. He finds the top, the crowd goes crazy, and so does Jakob. He says, I want more. There are three main benefits of using dynamic movements like the dead point. Firstly, it increases climbing speed and decreases the time under tension for your muscles, meaning you don't tire out as quickly. Even though you have to generate a high amount of force in the explosive extension phase, the rest of the movement should be mostly effortless since you're using the momentum of your body weight. Whereas a static movement in the same situation requires engagement of all the muscles throughout the entire movement, which can lead to increased muscle fatigue. So if it's done properly and in the right situation, the overall effort required to do a dead point should be less than a static movement. The main downside of a dynamic movement is that it's riskier. You're fully committing, meaning that if you undershoot, overshoot, or even lose your grip somehow, your whole body might fall off the wall. It's also risky in the way that if you overshoot or undershoot, you'll end up using more force with the reaching hand because now the arm is fighting against the momentum of the whole body and trying to correct for that. It's also important to keep in mind that no one can solely climb dynamically or statically. It depends on the type of hold, body positioning, preferences of the climber, etc., as to which technique is used. There are certainly many situations where a static movement is superior to a dynamic movement, but when used properly and with the correct technique, it pays big dividends in terms of speed and endurance. And that wraps up this video about dead pointing. If you got anything out of this video, consider subscribing and leaving a like. And if you have any ideas for part four, leave a comment below. Cheers.